Hello and welcome. My name is John Garlish. I am the Interim Program Director at the NMSU Bernalillo County Cooperative Extension Service, and I help farmers and gardeners grow more fruits and vegetables. And today, happy spring and welcome to the Spring Vegetable Gardening Tips. So now that you are enjoying to be outside, you can grow your own food. So, but where do you start? Where do I begin? It's so overwhelming to me. Have no fear. We're going to walk through some simple gardening tips that you can do in a large garden, in the patio space, and even with your kids or grandkids at your home. First off, look at your own space. Where is there sun? Where is there shade? Where is there space to grow? And you can grow almost anything. So choose a space where you can get some good sun if you can, but also, is there water? Are you able to put irrigation out to it? Or do you have to carry a hose or a bucket to water your pots or your garden with? So first off, check to see where your water source is and find a space that has good sun or maybe some partial afternoon shade. Next, ask yourself, are you going to plant in the soil, in the ground, or are you going to plant in container? If you're going to be planting in the soil, you may need to work the soil up a little bit, add some compost or manure, and then work that in a little bit further. If you have some lovely raised beds, you don't have to fill them up completely with soil or compost, but first maybe layer the bottom with some uh, bigger stumps or twigs or even some bricks or rocks, something to fill up the first six inches, and then you can grow, uh, fill the rest up with more soil. And as you're filling your raised beds up and even your small containers, you want to use something that is a potting mix. If you just take pure soil from your garden and dump it in, it may get too hard. So you need to amend your soil with compost, with manure, or even work with some soil less potting mix. The key thing is you want to make sure the soil is loose for your plants to grow and also make sure you have good drainage and everything so your plants do not get waterlogged and rot on you. How much soil do you need to actually grow? And that is something that the plants will tell you. If it is a root crop, such as carrots or beets, you may need eight to 10 inches of soil for those to grow. If you're growing something like lettuce, it only needs to be two inches. So you can have a smaller container for your lettuce and kale and your other crops. What about tomatoes and peppers? They like to have a little bit deeper, so four to six inches of soil profile for them to work with. So getting back out to the garden, how do you work with the garden or your raised beds? It's always good to have some good tools, so you may need to have a shovel as well as a, a spading fork to work the soil to turn it over if it needs be. Or if you have kids out in the garden, you can even use some of these small tools like this, great for the kids to work with, for them to work in the soil, so that way they can work the soil and get the soil worked well with the compost and manure before actually planting your garden seeds. If you're working with a container garden, as well as with a raised bed, it's always good to pre-moisten the soil before you plant. Many of our soils can be hydrophobic, which means they fear or repel water. So if you water the top, it may look wet, but as you dig deeper, it's really dry underneath. So how do you overcome that? And the way to overcome that is to mix your soil or your compost with water like you do a cake batter or cement mix. So what you do is you water the top, then you turn that soil over. You water again, and then you mix it up until it's just slightly moist to the touch. You don't want it raining or sopping wet, but you just want it moist enough so that way the water adheres, so that way next time you start to water, the water will actually go throughout the whole garden bed and get down to the roots of the plants. If you let your soil dry out, it forms a crust and water can't get down to the plants. 
So you may have to work the soil even around your plants uh, occasionally, so that way the water gets down to the roots and your plants can be very healthy and thrive. So what can you plant here in the spring? And spring is a great time to plant many things. And there are some vegetables that may like it cool and some plants that may like it warm. So first off, how warm or how cold is it outside? But now I wanna challenge you, how cold is that soil? And sometimes the soil can be 20 to 30 degrees cooler than the air temperature around it. So take your finger, get into that soil and feel how cold or how warm is it. If you have a soil thermometer, uh, you can do it that way too. So knowing how warm or how so cold your soil temperature is during the cooler season, such as here in April, it is good to plant radishes, to plant kale, to plant lettuce, as well as you can plant some of your flowers out like pansies and nasturtiums. All of those are edible and those like it on the cooler side and may be able to take a little bit of frost. Just because a store might be selling your peppers and tomatoes, don't plant them out in the garden yet. What is good for your peppers, tomatoes, melons, and squashes is to start them indoors first where it is a lot warmer for them to start growing. And as the temperature warms up later in May and early June, that is a great time to transplant those plants outside when the soil is warm. And many of those plants, such as the tomatoes and the peppers, are in the solanaceous family. Such a big word, but think about the first three letters of sol, which in Spanish means sun. Those are sun and warm loving plants. So if you get them out too early, they are not going to thrive. So wait till it warms up to plant many of those uh, warmer season crops. And there's another tradition that we have here in the Southwest, and that is the tradition of the Three Sisters gardening. And what are the Three Sisters when we talk about the vegetable gardening and food? We are referring to the Three Sisters of Sister Corn, Sister Bean, and Sister Squash. So when planting out those crops, First, plant out Sister Corn. She's growing to grow the tallest and gives the support for the other two. And when planting out Sister Corn, make sure you plant them in groups together because corn is wind pollinated, so they like to blow in the breeze, both forwards and backwards. So instead of planting Sister Corn all the way in a straight row, plant Sister Corn in a circle or a block so it's grouped together and you can plant them a little bit uh, closer. So that way all the kernels of the corn can fill out. So after sister corn is up about three inches or so, then it is time to plant sister bean. And the trick to planting sister bean is soak your beans overnight before planting. So that way they start to imbibe the water. Then you can plant the beans next to your corn plants. And with that, then as they start to grow, especially for those pole beans, um, they can start growing up the sister corn. If you plant sister bean too early, then you can't let sister corn grow up in between. So plant sister corn first, then plant sister bean after sister corn is a little bit taller. And then last, you can plant sister squash out into your uh, garden once it is warm enough for it to grow. Um, and what sister squash does is sister squash has the bigger leaves so it helps to shade and conserve the water during those hot summer months. So Sister Squash likes to spread all over the place, but she can also gain support from Sister Corn too. So when you plant all three together, Sister Corn provides the tall, Sister Bean help, uh, uses Sister Corn to support it, but Sister Bean also has another trick. She provides the nitrogen in the soil through her roots that the corn needs to grow. So the two support each other with nutrients and then Sister Squash helps to conserve the water and shade everybody. And then they all are ready to harvest in late summer and fall. So you can have the beautiful either sweet corn or even let the corn dry out for Chico's. You have both the fresh green beans and you can let the beans dry for pinto beans and dry beans throughout all of winter. And for Sister Squash, you have both summer squash and you have the squashes ready for storing during the winter, which is a great food for all of us to have. 
So here in the Southwest, you can plant all three of them together and let the three grow up over time. So for during the spring garden season, start to plan out when you want to grow your different vegetables and certain ones like the kale, you can, har you can harvest the leaves and they will grow back again and they will grow all summer long. But these seeds are small, so be careful because they might blow in the breeze or wash away. So plant those, make sure they're in the ground well, and then you can harvest this all summer long. Here we have leaf lettuce, and this is great for planting in the early spring, such as April, and then again in late September. And you can harvest the leaves and cut again, and they'll come and grow, but this does not like the heat of the summer. So either shade it out, or um, what you need to do is maybe pull it up for a couple months in the summer and replant in the fall. Another crop that we love to grow here in New Mexico and as part of our heritage is the green chili. Some people will plant that out in late April or mid-May when the soil temperature is warm enough, or you can start some seeds indoors, let the plants get about three inches tall, and then you can plant them out in your garden and enjoy the fruits of your labor. And remember, if you like red chili, all chili starts off green, but only a few select varieties will grow red. So have patience if you want your red chili later on in the year. Here we have some butternut squash. These seeds are great for working with kids as well. They have a large seed, about a half inch to maybe an inch long, and you can plant those, plant two or three together, and let them come up, and then you can harvest your fruits. But sometimes these take anywhere from 150 to 180 days. So if you think about that, it may take you five to six months from planting before you can harvest. Tomatoes are another lovely crop here from the, south, uh, from the Southwest as well as Central America. A great tip for these is they do like it hot. So start your seeds indoors or buy some plants and you can harvest them as soon as they get ripe and you can enjoy the fruits of your labor all summer long. You can can them, make salsa, or eat fresh on any of your sandwiches. And also, if you let the tomatoes ripen, you can harvest the seeds for yourself. Here we have some decorative gourds that you can let dry out. And if you leave the seeds inside, you can make shakers or maracas and other fun things. And you can carve these out as well as uh, other dry squashes and make birdhouses with and paint them over the winter months. Pinto beans or other beans are a great staple for many of us. Who doesn't like beans in our food? So this is a great staple for many of the New Mexico cuisines. So my suggestion is soak them overnight. If you are going to plant with the three sisters, plant sister corn first. If you just want the beans or the dry beans, you can plant them out in your garden, but make, you can harvest the fresh green beans if you want, but do let them dry out naturally until they're a straw brown color, and then you can harvest the dry beans and shell them and have them all winter long. Lastly, corn is another great one to plant with the kids. Um, the seeds are large enough that they can hold in their hand. Uh, plant them out in late April, um, and again, plant them in the group so they can pollinate themselves. Um, and then as they ripen, you can eat the sweet corn if you wanted to, um, or you can let them dry down for Chico's. One thing to watch out with corn, you cannot plant sweet corn, popcorn, or some of the rainbow corn varieties together because they easily cross pollinate with each other and they deter their flavor. So if you want popcorn, only plant popcorn. If you want the rainbow corn, only plant the rainbow or milling corn. And if you want sweet corn, only plant the sweet corn or give it enough room to grow. And these are only some of the vegetables that we can highlight here. If you'd like to know more about growing vegetables, NMSU Extension has a great home garden publication. You can find that on the Bernalillo County Extension website. Or if you Google NMSU home garden or home vegetable varieties, a publication will come up with all the different types of vegetables, as well as the different growing zones that we have here in Albuquerque and also here in New Mexico. And if you think about here in Albuquerque or even the state, we have many different climate zones and many different growing areas. So here where we're at at the Gutierrez Hubble House, 
our last frost is about the 1st of May, and our first frost is about mid-October. But if you go up the mountains, you may have a later frost date, or if you go to southern New Mexico, you may have a, a, an earlier last frost date in March. So know what your climate is, where you're at in the valley, on the mesa, or in the mountains, or even here in New Mexico, and figure out when is the time to plant certain vegetables. And some people up north may be able to grow peas and lettuce uh, during the uh, hotter seasons of the month, where other people down south who have a warmer climate may be able to put out their peppers and chilies and their uh, tomatoes earlier in the year. So know your growing season and choose your vegetables accordingly for what you do. And if you have questions, please contact myself at the Extension Office or any of the Extension agents around the state of New Mexico. We are glad to help you out and we hope that you are successful with your home vegetable gardening. And I hope you have enjoyed the bounties of your planting and harvesting. Just get out and grow. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.